you people. It's me, Ginny Metherall, and I am a fourth generation witch. Today, we're looking at my ever popular almanac series, studying all the rites, rituals, and traditions that you should do with your witchcraft in the month of March. It is a joy to be doing March because that means that spring is springing. Technically, it's not March because I'm actually doing this video, obviously, in February, which means that it's still a bit cold and chilly and February-like and rainy and wet. But March is round the corner and the celebration of spring is beginning. So, as with all these videos, what I like to do is a general overview of the month of March and the rites, rituals and traditions that you can do throughout the month. And then we'll look at the nitty gritty day rituals that you should be cracking on with through this month of spring. So, with that said, let's get straight on to the overview. The name March comes from the god of Mars, that Roman full-blooded god of war, and the lesser known agriculture. This is to do with the fact that it is the start of the agricultural season, with the ploughing and the seeding and the sowing and the whatever the farmers are getting up to at the moment. But this also has reference to the fact that the military campaigns that were paused over the winter, because it was a bit cold and everyone liked to go home to their families, all the soldiers then trotted back to the battlefield and started their wars again. But there are a lot of spring goddesses around in this season and it is filled with holy days for almost every religion. For example, the Hindus have their festival of spring, holy, starting on the 6th of March. The Muslims celebrate Ramadan, their season of fasting. The Jewish religion starts Purim. We're in the Christian Lent. And of course, not forgetting the Wiccan, marvellous Ostara, which is the festival of the equinox happening on the 20th of March. March, of course, is announced by the arrival of the Daffodil. A lot of the March spring flowers are this beautiful, cheerful yellow like the daffodil, the primrose, the celandine. And these are all celebrated within this month. And there is folklore attached to these plants. The daffodil used to be called the Daffy Down Dilly, which I think is a much sweeter name. Traditionally, it was stated that you shouldn't bring the daffodils inside of your home to bloom and flower. And smells so glorious until the first hen's eggs were hatched. Now I have slightly jumped the gun that's because I really like daffodils. They're really cheerful and they really do give me pleasure. So I slightly forget about these old-fashioned traditions about when and where you shouldn't or should bring flowers into your house. However I do like the primrose one. When you first pick your bunch of primroses you should take 13 of them because this will encourage the fairies to bring you luck when they see 13 primroses. Primroses are known as a fairy flower. If you hold your primrose up and gaze over its flower petals, you should be able to see any fairies in the vicinity through the heady haze of the primrose aura so you can look out for it. There's plenty of tales, especially in Cornwall and the West Country in the UK, saying how primroses led children astray whilst picking them and therefore were led into the fairy realm. Ooh. Hence why they're called key flowers in Germany, because they're considered the entrances to the fairy realm. Fairies really are quite taken up by primroses, so plant them by your back door and this will ensure that you have fairy blessings. And now is the time. They've got beautiful primroses in the shops at the moment. Go out, get some, put them in pots by your back door for your fairy blessings this month. And finally, primroses make a delicious wine, which combined with the wonderful dandelion and that beautiful yellow that it comes up, makes a wine that means that you can see the fae. March is also the time when if you're out in the early morning, as I often am, you will see hares boxing each other in the fields, which is the jill hares, the female hares, saying, back off war child to the other enthusiastic male hares. However, hares are the familiar of pretty much every spring goddess, such as Bridget, 
and if you haven't seen my Bridget video, I'll put it up here for you. Have a look, it'll tell you all about it. Um, the goddess Istra, who is the goddess that we base our Ostara, possibly Easter, on. And our other Anglo-Saxon spring goddess of Heretha. These goddesses all have familiars of hairs or can change into hairs. And in fact, witches are known to change into the shape of shifting hair. The hair is also the subject of the wild hunt. This is where old Nick, the, um, the king of the demons, shall we say, um, is on his horse of the night or nightmare with his slavering hounds. In the spring, he will go off and chase hares on the night hunt. If he catches the hare, it means that spring will not come because generally he's trying to catch the goddess of the spring and imprison her so she cannot bring forth the fertility and abundancy that we need. All hares that you see, take great care of. Do not touch them. They are sacred to somebody. March is known for its extremely changeable weather. One day it can be light and bright and sunny and calm and you really think that summer's on the way and the next day it can snow. This also comes in with the equinoctial gales. So the tides around the equinox, which this year is on the 20th of March, are at their extreme. They are the highest and lowest tides. Great for surfers out there. I'm not going to talk about the festival Ostara in this video particularly, because I'm going to do a whole video on that next week. So look out for it. And it will tell you all the traditions and rituals that you can follow to celebrate Ostara. So that's my overview for March. Um, make sure you, you don't bring in your daffodils before the hen's eggs have hatched. Oops. And make sure you've got lots of primroses around your house to encourage the fae. So now we've done that, let's get into the nitty gritty of the days. And of course, the best place to start is on the 1st of March. This is officially the meteorological, if I can say that right, beginning of spring. But we witches have been celebrating spring since Imolk, which is on the 1st of March. February. Now the reason we celebrate it then is because spring is happening. It's very clear that the snowdrops were forcing their way through the ground. The frogs were spawning and spring was springing. So we're a bit more in tune with the earth by celebrating it then. The other thing that you must not do on the 1st of March is open your windows and doors for any other reason apart from to go out. Don't do any airing of your house or leaving your door open to let in the sunshine. None of that. Keep them shut. This is the day traditionally where old Nick throws bags of fleas into your home. And if you've got any pets, make sure you de-flea them today because Otherwise, you will find infestations of the Black Army coming your way. I don't like a flea. They don't bite any of my other family. They only bite me because I've got very sweet tasting delicious blood and they love it. The 7th of March is the night of the full moon and this full moon is in Virgo. Astrologers believe that full moons have an energy to them and the Virgoan energy is that of security and order. So if you have trouble with your relationships at the moment, this is the perfect time to sort them out. Otherwise, great things to do on this moon is make moon water and any spells that require the moon water for security, love, relationships and order. Virgoans are very ordered people. I wish I was a bit more like them to be fair. Then this is the moment to make the moon water for those spells. This full moon has plenty of names. The chaste moon, I think this is in reference to the Christian Lent moon. The crow moon, because the crows start really getting together and making a noise at the time. And of course the worm moon, because the earthworms are abundant. Sometimes it's called the plow moon. There's lots of names for it, depending on where you live. Choose the one that you like the best. The 10th of March is a weather divination day. This means that if there is a hoar frost, a sharp frost on the 10th, 
It is borrowed this frost from February and we're going to have a very lovely summer and a plentiful harvest. So, and with this in mind, the next date to come up is the 12th of March, which apparently is the day that you should sow your onion sets. So all the gardeners out there, go and sow your unders on the 12th of March. This is to do with the god of onion sowing, who was some Celtic person who liked onions. I can't remember the details because I haven't written them down. If you know your onions, you'll sow your onions today. The 17th of March, I'm sure we don't need any reminding, is St Patrick's Day. St Patrick, of course, is the patron saint of Ireland. For all of you lot with Irish blood out there, today is the day to celebrate your ancestry. Now, St Patrick was known for showing the Holy Trinity, you know, the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost, to the people of Ireland by using a shamrock. This is a clover plant and clovers are known occasionally to have four leaves and the fourth leaf being lucky. My mother was permanently finding four-leaved clovers. She couldn't sit down on the grass without going, oh, look, here's a four-leaf clover, darling. You must have it. It's terribly good luck. And she'd give it to me and I'd press it. And every now and then I open some of my old books and find four-leaf clovers falling out of them, which give me great pleasure. They remind me of my mum. In previous times, these four-leaf clovers were actually carried by the Celts to ward off evil spirits. Therefore, they're considered a protection charm. So should you find a four-leaf clover, it's a great day to bring it out on St Patrick's Day the 17th and ward off all the evil spirits that are around while celebrating your heritage. Now, not many people know this, but the 17th of March is apparently also the day that Noah went into his ark. I came out on the 29th of April. Yeah, I thought I'd mention it here because I think it's rather sweet. I was always rather charmed as a child by Noah's excesses in his ark, um, especially when I learnt that there is a large area in the Middle East and in Ararat where, which shows evidence of a biblical-style flood. So, probably... It was true. I love a true story. The 19th of March is the traditional day where you must throw away your warming pan, meaning turn off your central heating. You don't need it after the 19th of March, and if you've got it on, woe betide you. Although I might keep mine on a bit longer. I'm quite a cold person, so I like a bit of central heating. It's not only turn off your central eating day, it is also Mothering Sunday. There is a lot of rubbish written about Mothering Sunday and it's been claimed by the Christians, which is just a load of rubbish. It wasn't. It was always about people going and paying homage and looking after their old mum. And it is one of the days of the year that as a mum, you will appreciate because you get flowers from your kids. And that's all I ever want is some flowers they've probably picked from my garden. But isn't it charming? It is a really old festival. It was highly prevalent amongst the Celts, not so much in the east of England, but definitely in the West Country, which is where I live. And even now, I still think, oh, it's Mothering Sunday. Oh, joy, oh, rapture. 21st of March is the night of the new moon. This is a rather special new moon because it is a cusp moon. It's on the cusp of Pisces and Aries. So it starts in one sign and moves into another sign. And it is the first of Aries' two new moons in a month. Now, astrologers and witches alike believe that new moons have their own particular energy and they are a great time to consider the growth in the coming month. And the energy that it takes on from Pisces is all about your intuition and psychic ability. But then, as it moves into Aries, the energy that it's taking from that is all about courage and strength. So, if you've got the courage to improve your intuition, you will grow strong with your psychic self. I do recommend that you spend the three days around the new moon practicing your gifts and asking the moon's blessing to help you see them grow. Good luck with that. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd love to know.
The 20th, of course, is the wonderful Wiccan Festival of Ostara. This is the spring equinox, one of the quarter days, as they are called. I'm not going to do a huge video about this here because, of course, next week I'm going to put one up for you and you'll love it. However, if you can't wait that long, you could look at my previous Ostara videos. There's plenty of information in there, which, of course, is still relevant today, and I won't be repeating it, so I'll put it up here for you. Have a look at that. I promise you it's worth it. I will say it is a time of balance. And so if you have anything that you feel is out of kilter in your life, today is the day where you will have the greatest success in bringing it back into balance. The last three days of March are also considered borrowed days, as I said before, and the weather on these days have been borrowed either from February or from April. If the weather on these days is borrowed from February, it means we're going to have a great summer, i.e. if it's really cold, our summer will be warm and loving. If they're borrowed from April, it means that the days are going to be warm and tender and balmy, and therefore we're going to have a cool and cold, rainy, wet summer. So watch out for those. Do leave me a comment below about any traditions that you have for March. There is quite a lot of birthdays in March. So if you have a birthday, why don't you? I might even say happy birthday to you. Don't forget to go to patreon.com for my coven meeting for March. I don't know what we're doing yet because I haven't written it, but the last two have been so successful. I might just carry on with my elemental series, but I can't decide. So look out for it on patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you could hit that like button as the trendy YouTubers say. I'm not a trendy YouTuber, but I would very much appreciate if you did. Otherwise, I will see you in just a few days. Music